My name is Francisco Garcia. I'm uh, 49 years old, brought up in Humble Park area. You know, been to prison damn near, uh, probably out of the 49 years, I've probably been did 35 of them motherfuckers in jail. How much time and, you and doing I, solitary? Well, I done, I just finished doing 11 years and the last seven of my 11, I've done in Tams, the and Supermax. Why did you go to Tams? Cause they said, he say, she <laughs> say shit. Confidential informant? Confidential informant. And that uh, I supposed to call the hit on somebody. And uh, they didn't give me no ticket. None of that shit. There no disciplinary ticket or nothing. So you were just basically just picked up out of your cell, put in a, put in a van and just transferred with no due process No hearings. due process, none of that shit. You know, when I was placed in SEG that night, uh, oh, it was during the day they put me in SEG, but during the night, police came to my cell, you know, uh, pack your shit up, you go on the Tams in the morning. I was like, wow, is mm. this fucking real? What the fuck's and going you're, on you're here? in general population in Menard? Yeah. Now, that, is, that wasn't even in Menard that happened. That shit happened in Graham. Graham wow. Crest. So you were in a medium... In school. Medium security prison. I was fucking in school, in a vocational class. I was doing fucking real good. No tickets, none of that shit. They just up and came and got me. Uh, my sonny got into a fight with another motherfucker. They came and grabbed all the Latin folks. Oh, they had all the Latin folks in SAG under investigation. Because this one person says he got jumped by us. So, uh... The guy that actually fought with this guy admitted it to them. You know, say, man, look, it wasn't no violation. It was nothing like shit. Me and him were playing basketball. One the other got rough with each other, and we had a one-on-one. -on -one. I kicked his ass. And so he got, up, he got upset and became like a confidential informant and made an allegation. Yeah, you made it. Mm -hmm. you, you, didn't, you weren't accused of touching him or anything? I wasn't accused of touching him or none of that were shit. Were you at the scene when this alleged fight happened? Yeah, he was, the guy was my celly. So you're celly and somebody else got a fight? He got into a fight with somebody else. With somebody else. When you rode at Tams, what was it like? When I rode, okay, you, I've been when here. You arrived, was, when you walked in the doors at Tams, got right. out the van. Okay, I'm going to tell you what happened with me, the experience I came with, you know, because when we was in fucking, uh, in the population and the other joints, everybody was talking about, damn, Tams are so strict, Tams are so fucked up, the showers come to you, you got to read your mail on the screen and shit like that. So that night when I was in SIG, when they came and told me, hey, Garcia, pack your shit. You're going to Tams in the morning. And, like, everything fucking hit me. Like, damn, the fucking shower is going to be coming to me. Hey, I, I got to read my mail through the, you know, through the fucking screen. And I got to go through all this crazy-ass shit. I'm like, what the fuck? It was, like, surreal for me. I was like, damn. You know, I'm actually finna go through this bullshit right here. So when we actually, actually, actually got out of got out the fucking van and I was on fucking Tam's soil, it's like my motherfucking legs were shaking because I didn't know at that time what I was going to experience, what I was going to go through or any of that shit. My legs right. just started fucking shaking like yeah, no reason. Yeah. You know Tra what I'm saying? Trauma, shock. Man, I was shocked like a motherfucker. And on you're sitting there, what was it like when they put you in the first bullpen? When I put, well, actually, what, what actually happened to me was when they told me to kneel down and shit, caught a mother, caught a hamstring cramp. And automatically, yeah, yeah, I was trying yeah, to get yeah. up. And the mm -hmm. police thought I was trying to resist them or something. And they oh, kind of forced me down. I'm talking about catching a cramp in my leg. <laughs> I'm catching a cramp. Mm -hmm. yeah, I had to straighten my leg out somehow while they were strip searching me. And so I'm sitting in, 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 in this damn uh, bullpen, asshole naked, you know, for like 10 minutes. Why they came and did the examination and the nurse came, checked on me and everything, and I'm like, here we go. Did they do a mental health evaluation to you there? No. When you first arrived here? No, they didn't do that. So once they gave, when they took all your clothes, what did they give you to wear? They gave me a jumpsuit. Uh, the, the beige jumpsuit. Jumpsuit, yeah. yeah. And, and slippers and drawers? They, give you no, they didn't give me no uh, drawers. drawers. Did they give me any drawers? Well, I know at one time no, there was no underwear. No, tans. they didn't give me no drawers. <laughs> I had a, the drawers that I had, I went to was D6, sale two. And what did you think when you walked on that pile? It was so damn quiet. I thought I was the only person on there until I heard a voice. Hey, uh, what joint you come from, brother? I'm like, who's that? It's Cato from the Kings. 
I'm like, oh yeah, I started talking. There was only four of us on the wing at the time. It was one upstairs and three of us downstairs. So you had a screen through them holes in the doors. Yeah, talking. you had a screen. So the next guy in the next door neighbor, he was already bugged up. He already snapped. You know, he telling me, I don't know why they brought this motherfucker next door to me. That nigga stool pigeon. That nigga name is on my ticket. And I'm like, is he talking to me or what? <laughs> then the guy, which was Hispanic, was upstairs. He 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 he, uh, he told me, man, don't listen to the dude. He's crazy. He lost his mind down here. He don't know what he's talking about. I'm like, okay, woo woo. So, uh, I don't know if you heard of Jericho Smalley. Yes. Yeah. So he was the one that reached out for me. Hey, uh, you need a ride out or something, man, so you can write your family, let them know you down here. I'm like, yeah, man, cause I ain't got nothing. I didn't get my property till like probably two or three days later and shit like that. Your property came with you. Yeah, my property came with me, but what I was allowed to have, I didn't get into like yeah. two or three days later and shit. And what was in the cell when you got there? There was nothing in the cell. All cement, block cement. I looked at it, you know, I'm like, damn, my legs kind of started shaking even more. I'm but like, is had, this where I spend my rest? When of you my got time? your property, you were not giving your TV, radio, or anything. Were you no. giving a disciplinary report? investigation report. I didn't catch no ticket and a week after I got there is when they pulled that investigative uh, report shit they sent me down there to the office and showed me the the investigative report saying that the reason why I was sent down to Tams was because I was it was gang activity and I supposedly called a hit a violation on somebody a confidential foreman makes an allegation you get sent from medium security to close supermax yeah and never was found guilty of anything. Never was found guilty. I was in level. I'm a, we was. I was on administrative detention. A. Uh, what's the A, a grade? I was on A grade. I was in A grade when I was in Graham. How long was, did you stay there for this? In where? In Tams. How long did I stay there? Yeah. Seven years. And did you get pro from there? No, not from there. But right before you got out, you were moved. Yeah, uh, 30 days before my parole date, they sent me to Stateville. Okay. Did you have problems mentally because of Tams? Why you were there? Yeah. Because now, you know, I have a conversation with somebody. They think I'm yelling and shit, screaming and shit, because I talk too loud and shit mm, like that. Yell yeah, noise. and yeah. it's because I try to explain to them. It's because, you know, when you're in seg or an environment like that, you try to holler at your buddy and shit, or somebody that you know, or whatever. You're trying to get some information off of somebody. You got to yell through the through, through the damn doors and shit because you can't hardly hear each other. And for so long, so long, for you know, seven years, I was in that motherfucker for seven years. Did you develop any sleeping problems? Yeah, I couldn't. You know, I was having problems with my sleeping. You know, tossing and turning. You know, uh, I go to sleep at night and all suddenly I'm awakened by somebody on the gallery making noise or. And actually, there's know, nobody out there. And nobody's out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the fuck? You know, am I in Cuckoo Land or what? What the fuck is going on here? You know? <laughs> well, do you think. How long do you think after you were there before you started having psychological problems because of the conditions? Hmm. Before you noticed them. Right. Before I noticed them, I noticed them like my maybe like six months and after. Yeah, six months after I was in Tams and, and shit. And what did you first I started, notice? you know, fucking hearing things that weren't even there. You know what I'm saying? I'd be in the cell, I'm thinking somebody talked to me. I get on, what you say? You talking to me? Nobody's there. And they were like, What you talking about, Pimp? I like, man, who call, who playing games with me, man? It's man. They trying to convince me, man, ain't nobody saying nothing to you. Do you have a lot of family phone calls? No family phone, phone calls. calls. Visits? I was able to get a visit from my mother. My mother and my sister and brother came down, but the, the visit and procedure was so fucking out of the way. You it's know, so hard, yeah. uh, my family was like, we ain't never coming back down here. You keep in contact with me through pen and paper. I'm not coming through this stuff no and more. And your family came all the way from all Chicago. All the way from Chicago, from, you know, seven hour ride or whatever, how much it is. But they're like, we ain't never coming down here to visit you again. We got to go through all this stuff. See, then, okay, now for the people that don't know what stuff is, can you explain what you had to go through to get on the visit? Okay, uh, I had to send in on a request, visiting request form. I had to send them who was coming to visit me, what relationship they were to me, and everything like that. So, and then they'll contact the people that you're going to go visit and everything like that and tell you, uh, okay, what time you going to come? And this is the day and this is the time. If you don't meet that day and time, we won't let you in. So, okay. So then when the officer, when you get the visit, what happens? Shit, I'm still handcuffed. Still shackled. So, no, when they come to your cell, tell me time for your visit. What, what, 
strip search anything yeah they strip search you before you come out make you take your jumpsuit off shake you down right there and then when you step out the cell they put you in the shackles put the handcuffs in front of you you know in a the box the box and they walk you down to the visiting room when you got the visiting room did they chain your feet to the floor Yes, they did. Yeah, they, they had a little lock. I, I built. Yeah, they, they had a boat on there that they hook it up to, and I couldn't go, like, nowhere. And this is not a contact visit. No, this is not a contact Dude, visit. There's no contact with you in the visit at all. All glass and a phone thing. Or it was intercom. Phone. No, no intercom. It, was, it was through the intercom, yeah. And then after the visit, even though you had no contact with anybody, still got still shook down. down. Still got shook down. Had, they tell me, spread my ass cheek to the pink pot. <laughs> she know, they you know, some of them play jokes and everything like that. But they were actually there was some assholes down there that they were, you know, like my next door neighbor. Since he was a bug and everything like that, the police used to come over there just fucking Harassing. with him, just to harass him, make him snap and everything like that. I actually fucking saw a po I don't know who you you know tattoo. Yeah, that mob pulled his shit out on dude. Exposing himself. Exposing so, himself. So for people that don't know what you mean, that's what. He, yeah. So he flashed his penis. Man, on. he pulled his shit out. I'm like, is this really fucking happening here? Did this police officer just pull his dick out? Can't no way, no damn uh, way. So the mental health, when you realized there was something wrong, was there anybody there watching to make sure you didn't become suicidal or have mentally become mentally unstable? No, ain't nobody come watch over me. Nothing. Or checked up on me, you need anything. The only thing they did was they came around with their damn little clipboard. How you doing? Yeah, how you doing? I'm a uh, blase, skip it, boom, bam, skip. You need anything? No, or if I tell them I'm having trouble with sleeping, oh, you got trouble? We got something for you. So, so they wanted to medicate <laughs> Yeah, they, they want to medicate me and shit. Did you know? anybody try to help you adjust when you got there? No. Adjust the Tams or yeah, just the just a solitary? No, ain't nobody All together, besides the seven years in Tams, you did a solitary in your life. Wow. I would have to say at least 15 years of my life. Is that I've including the solitary. seven or not? That's including Tams? Including Tams. Okay. How old are you? I'm 49. How long have you been out? Uh, this is the crazy part about it. I come home in 2007 and since the day, the very first day I came home, the police from the gang crime in our neighborhood were harassing me, harassing me, harassing me, harass, harassing me so much that I've done three bids since I've been home. Like, okay, you did all this time in solitary prior to Tams even. What effect do you think this had on you? Because you're saying, okay, you've been out six years now. And you did a total of, you said, how many years is it? 15? About 15, yeah. So you would have been, you're 46, you would have been 39 when you got out. So between, you spend half your life in solitary confinement before you're released from prison. That's what the fuck Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much do you think that solitary confinement affects your everyday life out here right now? Oh, it does because, like I was telling you earlier, I have, a, you know, we have a discussion with somebody or something like that and... Frank, why are you so damn loud? You know, like you just did in the car. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I just did in the car, like they did earlier, and it, it ain't like I do it on purpose. It's just that I was so used to screaming out the door, oh, playing games or whatever, that I think this is like my normal speech. Vote, yeah, my vo voice and shit like that. You sleep normal now? No, nah, I don't even sleep, man. I toss and turn. You see the bags under my yeah. eyes and shit like that. I this I got this shit from 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 Tams. Cause I couldn't sleep. You, aged. Okay. you know, I couldn't sleep right, right? And can you hold the job down? Nah, I can't even hold the damn job because every, it's like everything I say has got a curse word behind it. If you notice or not, yep. you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I don't know, I can't stop or just, you know, I don't know what the hell it is, but every time for some reason, it's gotta be a bad cuss word in the shit with everything right, I about, say. How about the following directions from a boss? Do you have problems with somebody, you know, standing on you, do this, do that? Like the correctional yeah, officers used to you do. Know, Can you yeah. adapt to a job or is that a problem? Yeah, it, it's definitely a problem because, you know, it's like when I'm working, I put myself in a state of mind like I'm in SEG or, or in the penitentiary. You know, I, now I got to listen to what this guy is telling me what to do. I've done that shit, yeah. I've done that shit for so many times of, of telling me when I can shit and piss and eat and stuff like that, that when a normal person say it in a legit manner, like in a job or something like that, you know, you revert. I, I go, yeah, I revert to penitentiary mentality. 
you know. How many I, times you've been fired because of this? I've been fired like three times. And you have a job now? I ain't got no job right now. You got a house or you living with somebody else? I'm living with somebody else. That's nice enough to give you a place to sleep. Yeah, and I don't even pay them rent. You know, uh, I uh, share with them mm -hmm. my uh, mm -hmm. my uh, link card link and card. shit so we can keep food on the table, but yeah, that's and about they it. nothing. Other than that, I ain't got a damn thing. And you're off parole? Off parole, been off parole. And you've got no assistance from... Ain't nobody come out, reach nothing. out to me. Nobody hollered at me, hey, you know, you home now. Uh, is there anything we can do for you? In fact, uh, like my last bit, I reached out. I did all the pay I did all the footwork myself to try to get into St. Leonard's because I didn't have no parole site. Right. Okay. So I laid up there and tried to get up with St. Leonard's, I filled out the application for them and everything like that. Never got up with me. So the day of my parole date came, they sent me to 179th in Lincoln somewhere in that Harvey, Illinois or something, or one of them towns over there to a, a missionary house where it was just like sick. Are well, you locked up again? The lights are all fall up in the house. The guy said I can take a shower once every other day. Did you have any problems with relationships with women? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm holding this now. You know, my nickname used to be Pimp. Mm -hmm. Now they call me Pimp without a hoe, because I'm homeless. <laughs> you know, I ain't it's got not... no hoe. <laughs> I ain't got no hoe, man. Okay, now, yeah, this is over for you. What would you like to tell people about solitary? Should we have it? Should we not have it? If we don't, why shouldn't we have it? We shouldn't have it for the simple fact that, you know, the average person ain't going to be able to deal with the stuff with the... With the uh, uh, psychological, part. psychological part of it, or, you know, not being able to get on the phone and talk to your family or none of that. You know, all that's taken away from them, you know.